you are welcome to Multimedia Plus Online Television. Top stories in this edition. There has been a major outcry in Fritam following the death of a five-year-old girl who was allegedly raped and killed by a 20-year-old. The executive director of the Sierra Road Safety Authority, Ibrahim Sano, speaks on plans put together by the authority to prevent accidents during the rains. Chairman of Media Reform Coordinating Group, Dr. Francis Sowa, has described the 1965 Public Order Act as a bad law and one that stifling media liberty and free speech. Prosecuting lawyer in the ongoing treason trial between the states versus Alfred Palo Conte says the accused, Mr. Conte, did take a pistol to State House, seeking vengeance for his uncle, former president Joseph Said Momo. Well, all of these stories and more are all lined up in today's news broadcast. I am your host, Lucy Imanet Aliu. There has been a major outcry in Freetown following the death of a five-year-old girl named Khadija. Khadija follows a long queue of young girls who have been molested and raped in recent years. Last year, His Excellency President Julius Madabio declared a state of public emergency on rape in Sierra Leone. But it seems the situation is only getting ever royally worse and tightening legal policies to stop the ongoing social menace. Following the incident, a peaceful protest was staged in Freetown of the Criminal Investigations Department's headquarters on Padembo Road, calling for justice to be served. Now from Central Freetown, our reporter, Mamesu Rebecca Kamara, tells us more. A city on the shock. Never has there been this huge multitude of protesters in the streets over an issue of rape. This seems to be a straw that breaks the camel's back. These protesters converge here from various areas in Freetown. They all have a common cause to see justice served for a five-year-old girl who was allegedly raped by a 20-year-old cousin. Rape is now endemic in Sierra Leone and it's been perpetrated at an astonishingly massive rate. According to police statistics, reported cases of sexual and gender-based violence in Sierra Leone has now reached 8,500 or even more. A third of that statistic involves minor sexual and gender-based violence Campaigners say the actual figure are much higher as most cases are never reported. Today to call on authorities to see reason with us because we need justice for um, the five-year-old who was brutally raped, alleged, um, it's not, uh, and many others who have been silenced in the fight, um, who has gone through um, the issues of um, rape and gender and um, sexual penetration. And today we are here, like my foundation is here to give support to Kids Advocacy Network. Um, some time ago, about two years ago, we were again um, at the same place um, in black, wherein um, again we were fighting for a five-year-old who was again brutally raped and left paralyzed. So we are here to send a simple message that um, justice needs to be done and we are happy with the turnout, we are happy with the way people responded and I'm just coming from um, meeting with the Attorney General together with uh, my colleagues and we are very happy because she's very committed in ensuring that there is justice. Samuel Sayo Conte is the Deputy Head of Media and Public Relations at the Sierra Leone Police. The Sierra Leone Police, we are not happy because this is a very um, young um, child, five years of age, Khadija Madina Sako. And of course, our responsibility is to save life and property. So in that regard, we are doing our utmost best, I repeat, our utmost best to bring the perpetrators to book 
and we are going to leave no stone, I repeat, no stone unturned. Of course, among those that we've got in our custody, um, we have Ibrahim Ba, 20 years of age, and his mother, Mariama Sajor Bari, and of course, a private teacher who was teaching the late child now. His name is Alex Mohamed Nalo, and a tenant, Agnes Jabua. All of them are residing in the same address of number 25 Spore Wood. Number 25 Spore Wood. So what we are saying as an institution that is very much keen in having justice and what is key in this case is that taking into consideration the age of the child and we are thankful that we've got four suspects so far the investigation is going on well and we will soon get back to the public as to how the investigation will lead us that's where we'll go the death of Khadija sent a chill down the spine of many Sierra Leoneans, not least local musicians who have also joined voices in loud unisys to end rap in the country. Really, of course, you don't know me, Minister Z. Um, Adeya for can seek um, justice for Khadija, just Khadija. At the moment, me na mommy for Khadija, me na, you know, auntie for Khadija, so we can seek justice for Khadija, and we hope so justice will prevail. Yeah. Actually, I feel the pain, you understand, especially with death can inside. You know, the pain, I feel the pain, it, I, it, I, because like, I get five years old picking, you know, when a girl picking also, so I just imagine if na maybe happen to, how are they feeling, that feeling that I get at the moment. They don't go on, not so today don't begin. We don't the same, you know. The cases then they plenty, plenty, plenty. We just go down the drain just like that, you know. So we we just too tired. We just too tired, and we won't put an end to this. Imagine five years of age girl, you know. You mortal man, they go rape them to the point of death. How it feels like we all get picking them. Why we decided to have a protest at this particular point in time when. We are aware that there is a state of emergency and also we're dealing with COVID-19 and also we didn't have a, um, a police clearance to do it. But it was, it was, it was so like, it was, it's, it wanted it to be spontaneous and we wanted to send a strong message that we're aware that we might be breaking one or two laws. But this is something that happened like each and every one of us. The statistic of sexual and gender-based violence has swollen to the astonishingly high proportion in recent years. Toddlers and babies less than five months of age are now topping the list of raped victims and are most time left paralyzed and even dead like in the case of Khadija. Multimedia Plus, Memesi Rebecca Kamara. Each raining season in Sierra Leone presents more chances of road accidents and fatalities. A previous report by the World Health Organization says death rates as a result of road accidents in Sierra Leone reached 2.68%. But now that the rains have begun, it is feared that the rates of road accidents will soar. My colleague Shekapuska Kamara I spoke with the executive director of the Serlin Road Safety Authority. We have the short, medium and long term, but for the short ones now as we enter into the rains, we want to have our presence felt at uh, major crossing points, especially uh, Mile 38, Buri, Buri Junction and maybe Moyamba Junction, leading and maybe Matotuka as the case may be. The reason being, we want to see how we can start enforcing or doing the uh, enforcement test of breathalyzers. Because uh, most of the drivers, most, be it private or commercial, are in the habit of uh, drinking and driving, especially along the highways. So we want to see how best we can uh, put uh, those uh, certain uh, curtailing measure so that they are aware that we breathalyze them and uh, they will reduce in the alcohol intake. That is one. Secondly, we also intend to do a robust sensitive. We are meeting tomorrow with the driver's union and Sierra Leone Brewery, we are collaborating with them for the breathalyzers, but for the driver's union, we are meeting them tomorrow 
so that we can have a communique, maybe a circular or communique, in that all vehicles plying the highway routes must ensure that they meet certain safety requirements. Vis-a-vis, -vis, you have to have a good tire, you have to have your, ref your, your, reflector, uh, your reflector strips, you have to have your lights, the beam, and uh, the the, your, your light has to be regulated, meaning your beam lights, your front light has to be regulated. And we are agreeing tomorrow on certain checks. It will not be the normal robust road safety checks that we do. But for the rains, we are also sending this and we'll also be doing sensitization as well. We once it's rain season, we'll do massive sensitization. So we are commencing on that too uh, in the coming weeks. So we're meeting them tomorrow and we're putting out the safety checks and we have to ensure that they also every commercial vehicle has to have a passenger manifest and uh, your tire has to, we, do, we cannot tolerate anyone with smooth tire to go beyond mile 38. We'll park your car there, you pay fine, and you also get your tires fixed before you move beyond that point. So we want to, once we engage them tomorrow on this, they're going to have a radio conversation, a TV conversation, we'll also do jingles on this, and then we, 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 just, we can just phase it out, at least for the rains. Well, if you are just tuning in, you are watching news coming to you from Multimedia Plus Online Television. We will now go for a short break. Stay focused. Don't Don't on the Multimedia Plus, number one, number one of the country. Multimedia Plus, beyond creativity, that now we mission. Multimedia Plus, we they bring to you so much quality. Multimedia Plus, number one, number one, number one, yeah. Hey, uh. Quality video we there, photo shoot voice over we there, jingle and soundtrack we there, documents keep podcast we there, market and sales, audio production sell we there. Don't forget to tap on Kana Multimedia Leash. Welcome to the land of creativity. Yeah, at the bongo glove with the beauty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We see me photo. See me video, see quality. If you listen me music, see quality. You go feel the magic. Number two, come with this kind of place. Yes, that's a bit of a custom of the way. Welcome back, you're still viewing this edition of Multimedia's news broadcast. As the matter keep unfolding, prosecuting lawyer in the ongoing season trial between the state versus Alfred Palo Conte says the accused, Mr. Conte, did take a pistol to state house seeking vengeance for his uncle, former president Joseph Saidu Momo. Our legal reporter, Fatun Sabin Jalo, brings us up to speed. On Tuesday, 23rd June 2020, the lead prosecutor, Adrian Fisher, told the Honorable Court that as a result of the coup in 1992, that was why Paolo went with a gun at State House to exact revenge for his uncle, former President Momo. Paolo Conte explained before the court that yes, he wasn't happy because he was sacked as a result of the coup. But that doesn't mean that he will go that far to kill the president. He also mentioned that the coup was over 20 years ago and that he had moved on because he holds no grudge against the president. Adrian Fisher also mentioned that since the first accused used to be minister and member of ONS, he used to visit State House and that means he has knowledge about the security system at State House. Paolo responded that he used to visit State House once a week and is not in charge of operational facilities at State House. He was only in charge of strategic planning and so he has no knowledge of the security system at State House. The judge decided to move the trial at State House in the next adjourned date so that the jury will see the crime scene and have a better understanding about the matter before them. Multimedia Plus Online TV, Fatima Tabin Tejala reporting. Well, let's quickly go for some health sensitization, even as we continue to take preventive measures to keep ourselves safe in the midst of this coronavirus. There is a global outbreak of a new coronavirus disease that is rapidly spreading to a number of countries around the world. Common signs and symptoms include cough, fever, shortness of breath, and difficulty in breathing. In severe cases, Complications include pneumonia, 
and kidney failure may occur and possibly leads to death if left untreated. Everyone is at risk of getting this disease. The virus is spread through droplets produced during coughing or sneezing by a sick person. You can get the disease if you are in close contact with a person who has the disease or infected animals and animal products. Travel to areas affected by the outbreak is a risk to getting infected. To protect yourself and others, wash your hands frequently with soap and water or use alcohol-based hand rubs. Cook your meat products and eggs thoroughly. If you are infected, prevent spreading the disease by covering your mouth and nose when coughing or sneezing with flexed elbow or tissue and wash your hands immediately after. If you suspect that you or a member of your family or anybody has the coronavirus, you should immediately seek medical care at the nearest health facility. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health and the ZNPHI with support from partners. And now we continue with the rest of our news stories for this hour with me, Lucy Emanet Aliu. Successive governments in Sierra Leone have come and gone with lofty promises of repealing Part 5 of the 1965 Public Order Act. None has yet been able to deliver as promised. Part 5 of the Act criminalizes libel and defamation. The bill for the repeal of the said section was quite recently thrown out of the world of Parliament. This came of following promises the present government had made in its manifesto to repeal the said section of the law. The defamation law has seen many journalists incarcerated in the last two decades, thereby stifling media liberty and free speech. My colleague Anthony Vandy has been speaking to chairman of Media Reform Coordinating Group, Dr. Francis Sora. When we talk about um, libel, it falls under the bigger picture of defamation. And defamation is to publish um, something about somebody which reduces the, um, the person, um, in, the, in the person's estimation in the eyes of right thinking members of society. Um, basically, that defamation can either be libel or slander. So libel is um, defamation in the, in the permanent form, and then slander is um, in the transient form. Otherwise, slander at initially was about radio and TV, and libel about newspapers, things that are written on newspapers. Of course, today with the advent of technology, the line is blood, so some jurisdictions talk about libel for both print and electronic media. Now, this whole law in question, the criminal libel law, it's um, a law that criminalizes free speech. Now, what is the origin of that? Now, defamation itself is a tort, so it means it's a civil law. So the origin of defamation is a tort, a civil law. Now, what happened in Sierra Leone? We have the 1961 Civil Defamation Ordinance, which deals with issues of civil libel law. But then, in 1965, came the Public Order Act. And in the Public Order Act, we have Part 5, um, which has the, the offenses of defamatory libel, which is basically, basically criminal libel, the, the um, um, fault for publication and seditious libel. So, Actually, we have three offenses under Part 5. So when we talk about, about criminal libel laws, most often we refer to sections 26 and 27 of the Public Order Act, but there is section 32 that also talks about false publication, and then 33 that talks about seditious libel. So, but what is more prominent is the one that has to do with defamatory libel, otherwise civil and um, criminal libel. Now, what? So we will know that there have been numerous calls for the repeal of that law. Let's go back to history. When we had the TRC in its report of 204, the TRC report concluded 
that criminal libel laws were not good for any democratic society, that they are leftovers of colonial regimes. And the TRC report recommended the repeal of criminal libel laws. The Human Rights Commission of Sierra Leone, in its um, annual human rights report, had consistently called for the repeal of those laws. Sludge and other bodies, including MRCG, have been advocating the repeal of that law. In 2016, we had a national consultative conference, a symposium, in which all stakeholders, including the police, including the Law Reform Commission, committed themselves to supporting the repeal. Now, fast forward to 2017-18, we had the elections. The Sierra Leone People's Party, the SLPP, in their manifesto, they were explicit that they were going to repeal the criminal libel law. So if you ask about the status, when the SLPP government came to power, they did say to us that they were going to fulfill their promise. What happened? We saw the Minister of Information, Honorable Ramanswari, had in several public fora or forums made the point that indeed His Excellency is committed to repealing the law. We saw His Excellency, when he went to the UNGL Assembly, he reiterated his government commitment. And then in 2019, in September, for the first time in the history of Sierra Leone, the cabinet resolved that the criminal libel laws should be repealed. But because we have the three arms of government, the executive, the judiciary, and the legislature, the executive had done its own part by concluding in parliament that the law is a bad law and it should be repealed. In 2019, December, the bill to repeal the 54-year-old legislation was tabled in parliament. We were so happy that we've got to that point. And then, January, February, much didn't happen. Then COVID came, parliament had to stop sitting. And then the lifespan of that first parliament had, end, had ended. The new leader of government business said, on technical grounds, the bill had lapsed. So parliament was going to withdraw the bill because technically you cannot debate a bill by, by a particular standing order that had been there beyond the time it should be there. So where we are at present, the bill which was tabled in parliament had been taken out of parliament, but this time around, the bill should be tabled again in parliament alongside the Review IMC Act, the Independent Media Commissions Act, which should serve as some of those mechanisms that will be used to regulate the media. Law is a bad law. I can say that as an individual, as a practicing journalist, as somebody who has worked in the media for about um, 19 or so years, that all criminal libel laws will do to a country's democratic credential is to take you 10, 5 steps backwards in terms of the gains you will have made as a country. And then you Well, that's all we have time for in today's news podcast. Here on Multimedia Plus Online Television. But before we close... Here's a recap of the headlines. There has been a major outcry in Freetown following the death of a five-year-old girl who was allegedly raped and killed by a 20-year-old. The executive director of the Sierra Road Safety Authority, Ibrahim Sano, speaks on plans put together by the authority to prevent accidents during the rains. Chairman of Media Reform Coordinating Group, Dr. Francis Sowa, has described the 1965 Public Order Act as a bad law and one that stifling media liberty and free speech. Prosecuting lawyer in the ongoing treason trial between the states versus Alfred Paolo Conte says the accused, Mr. Conte, did take a pistol to State House seeking vengeance for his uncle, former President Joseph Said Momon. Thank you very much for sharing your time here with us and multimedia plus online television. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel as Multimedia Plus Online Television for more updates, news podcasts, programs, and interviews. We're also on Facebook as Multimedia Plus. Please visit, like, and share our page in case you haven't. I am Lucy Emanet Ali. Until next time, stay safe and healthy.